In this video, we are going to look at open data that is available in the French geo portals and geo services. We're going to delineate the catchment of our study area, add open data, and prepare field maps. So here we are at the geo portal of the, uh, the French government, and uh, we can look for a study area which is close to uh, Digne les Bains in this example. And it gives us uh, aerial photographs and maps, boundaries, and uh, there are other thematic data available. So this gives an idea on what data is available, but it doesn't give us the data to be used in uh, a GIS. So we need to find another way to download this. It needs a bit of um, Googling around, but uh, another keyword you can often use is GeoService. And uh, if I Google IGN GeoServices, I end up on this page where uh, the web services from the government are available. So, and maybe you remember from the open data uh, lessons that uh, there are different web services. Um, there's WMS, Web Map Service, uh, which just gives a picture. And that's what we have here for uh, aerial photographs and for uh, maps. There's a WFS, which is for the vector data. There's WCS, which is to get real raster data. Um, this site is quite complete, uh, but in French, and it comes with tutorials and uh, a lot of information. But uh, by now, we should understand that we can just simply copy this link to the WMS and use that in QGIS. So there's a WMS in the browser panel where I can make a new connection. You can give it any name. And this one is called Découverte. They have different levels with different names. So let's do that so we are not confused later when we add other ones. I paste the link, click OK. And then I can expand, uh, clicking the triangle. And then when I drag it to the map canvas, it will give me the data. Chose now the whole world, but uh, I'm interested in where the fieldwork is located near Digne Le Bain, so I'm going to install the geocoding plugin. And it adds this little button. And there you can uh, add the name of a place or a street name or a full address even. And here I can find Digne Le Bain, it's a dot here on the map. And when I zoom in, it will get that aerial photograph information from the web service. And we see that it's quite detailed. They've blocked out a part there of uh, the city, uh, but most of the area is there. And we can even find uh, camping where we can stay during the field work. But this data is still online and it comes in uh, WMS tiles, so it's quite efficient. And we can also add a topographical map in the same way. And we see that uh, when we zoom in, it gives us uh, more detailed maps. So the scale depends on the zoom level. Now let's see what other web services are available. There's Essential, which gives us access to some other layers. vector and raster data available there, but not exactly what I need. So we're looking for administrative boundaries and maybe they are there under experts and they see their administrative and in different formats, but I want the vector data. So therefore I'm going to look for WFS. I copy this link. So it's good to read those pages to see what all the data is about. I'm going to make a new connection, give it a new name. It's called expert, so let's call it IGN expert. Expand that section and now it loads from the web and there we see what layers are available. 
So uh, there's the different administrative levels in uh, in France, the arrondissement, the commune, and uh, the département. And due to a little bug, I just added to a fresh uh, project. Otherwise, it doesn't overlap for some reason with aerial photographs. Not sure why that happens. But here you see it loads, and it also has some uh, areas uh, not located in uh, Europe. In the same way as we did before, I can look for Digne. And there it is. So here we see the department level. Now let's add the commune, which is more like municipality. And when you have data from the National Mapping Agency, you're quite sure that that's the most uh, accurate and up-to-date one. And these are the arrondissements. Now let's assume that we want uh, to work within this boundary of the arrondissement, then I can uh, export the arrondissement that we uh, need. Make sure we choose the one that uh, Digne is in. And uh, I can uh, create a selection. And I can create a selection, so make sure that uh, the right layer is um, selected. And then I can export the selected feature. And it's good to build up our database. So I made a new folder, Fieldwork, and I'm going to make a new database, which is the Geo Package. So all our layers will be there in the end. And the name of the layer is arrondissement and I'm going to change the projection here to uh, what we're going to use in this project and this is in UTM zone 32 uh, north and when I click OK it will create a copy of that selection in the database and then uh, I remove the other layers and that's uh, what we can then further use in our uh, project so remember that uh, from these geo portals or geo services, you can uh, get access to the data. If it's a WMS, it is a picture rendered from vector or raster data, which you can use as a backdrop. If it's WFS, web feature service, then it is a vector uh, layer, which you can uh, then export to a GIS file, to a geo package or to a shape file. And there is the WCS, which will give you the raster data from the server, and you can export that to a GeoTIFF, for example. Besides using administrative boundaries, we can also derive the catchments from a digital elevation model. And we can download here from the GeoServices website a digital elevation model that can be used for that. And there are different uh, DM products, so you need to look a bit around to find the correct one. We're looking for very detailed ones. And the name of that product is the RG Alti. And it's available at a one meter or five meter spatial resolution. For the delineation of catchments, the five meter uh, resolution is sufficient. So if you click the link, you can see that it's uh, divided per uh, department and our study area is in department four. Alp de Haute Provence. It's an FTP link. We can uh, copy the link and paste it in FileZilla. It's uh, open source software for uh, accessing FTP servers. Just simply paste it at host and it fills uh, the content in the correct fields. I connect to the server of EGN. And um, on the right side you see the server, on the left side your local disk. And uh, we see it has a lot of data, so we need to figure out uh, what we need, because this is basically everything. And there's this uh, first uh, zip file with the mosaicage, which means the, the tiles. And that sounds useful to have. So if I uh, double click, it will download to the folder that I have on the left side. So I can extract uh, the file and uh, the part for France, the shapefiles over there. 
So that's the only one I need. The other ones are not in Europe. I save it to a folder, which is for the five meter, this one, department four, and that's the file name given on the website on the left. If I double click, it will download to the fieldwork folder that I have on the left side. So after downloading, I can uh, open the zip file and extract the part that I need. And these are ASCII grids. That's a raster format. And I'm going to just extract this whole folder. And later we need to figure out which tiles we need. Okay, now let's see if we can get it in QGIS. First, we need to locate our uh, catchment area roughly. So I'm going to install the Quick Map Services plugin. And I have the name of the river, it's called the Claret, and it should be near Digne Le Bain. So with the Quick Map Services, I change the settings so I can see more services. Choose the tab More Services, Get Contributed Pack. Click Save. And then uh, we have a longer list here, but we start with uh, OpenStreetMap. And you can use the geocoding plugin to find Digne. And I know the catchment is a little bit north, near La Robine. And uh, OpenStreetMap doesn't have all the smaller rivers, so I go to Google Hybrid. And there I see Ravin de Claret, and that's the river for which I want the catchment, because I'm going to study that catchment. With uh, Google Terrain, I can also get a bit more information about the relief, with shading, and I see there clearly uh, the river. So I use that to uh, get the approximate extent for which I want to have those DEM tiles. So those are the DEM tiles, but we also have that file with all the um, uh, tiles in the shape file. That will help us to find uh, the numbers of those tiles that we need. We can give them a label so we can see those numbers. And uh, we need to make sure that the label uh, fits nicely in the square and this has to do with the font size. I'm going to change that. Let's try 7. Yes, now it fits. So I'm going to try and find those tiles. This is the file for the, the 1 meter. But uh, these numbers correspond approximately with the 5 meter, so probably there's also a file for the 5 meter, but I didn't find that. And you have to look at those numbers, so 955, 956, that's all what we need. And that also corresponds with the coordinates that you see in the coordinate uh, field. So this is a bit of uh, finding out which are the ones. And then we can merge tiles into a geotiff. In the miscellaneous, choose merge. Select uh, the four tiles. Choose an output file name. We save it to our fieldwork folder. And run it. Let's remove what we don't need. And there we see a question mark at the projection. So let's figure out what projection is used here. And uh, there must be somewhere some metadata. So I'm going to look about it. Okay, I see documentation. Let's uh, click that button. And there's HTML format metadata. And then there's projection information. 
RGF 93, Lambert 93, RGN 69. Let's see if we can find it. I simply copy that and paste it in Google. And then uh, via the website epsg.io, I can find the EPSG code, which is 2154. So let's use that. 2154. Click OK, and indeed we see now that the DM shows up in the right spot. But our project also does not have the correct projection. So we can say uh, set project CRS from layer. And now we're all set. Now we can follow the rest of the procedure of uh, catchment delineation. We need to fill the sinks. We use Wang and Liu. We can ignore the warning, keep the default here. Save the output, GM filled. Now that's done, assign the projection. And the next step is to calculate the Strala order. And there's a nice result. Let's visualize it in uh, palleted unique values. Use blues. And then we need to select the correct uh, streams. And we do that with the raster calculator. Choose Strahler, large or equal than a value. And let's uh, do 5. You need to calibrate this value. You can change here the output projection. Change the styling and then uh, you can visualize the streams as blue. I remove the 0 to make zeros transparent. Here we have the streams. And we can check how well that fits for the calibration. Now we're just going to go with this. And we see here on the map that uh, the delineated river is not exactly at the place of uh, the bridge. This is prob probably a place where you want to put a diver to measure the, the discharge. But for the catchment delineation it is uh, better to go a bit downstream where it enters the bigger river. So copy the coordinate of the outlet. Therefore it's very important that you make sure it's in the correct projection. The same as the DEM. Make sure that you choose the filled DEM. Save it as catchment. And there's the result. Set the projection. and convert it to a polygon, because we want the boundary as a polygon. Set the projection. Value 100 is our catchment, so I'm going to invert the selection and delete the outside so we only have the catchment polygon. 
And there it is. Now we just need to do some finishing touches with the styling. Just a simple outline. Change the color. Make it a bit bigger. And there's our catchment boundary, so the delineation of our study area. I'm going to make the DM a bit uh, smaller. I'm going to clip it to the canvas extent. Just to save some space because we want to take it with us uh, in the field. Share it with our teammates maybe. I want some contact so I don't clip it uh, strictly to the boundary. And then we can derive the channels using the channel network and drainage basin tool. Use the clipped uh, DEM, Strala threshold. If you want uh, flow direction, you can uh, keep it. Switch on and off what you want. But for us, the shape file of the channels is important. Delineated stream is of course a bit rough, so in the field you can uh, verify it and trace it with the GPS or digitize it from the remote sensing image. Gives an error, but nothing went wrong. We have a result. Set the projection. And change the colors. And make invisible what we don't want to see. Let's style uh, the DEM. Just single and pseudo color. And the color ramp, create a new color ramp. Choose a preset from CPT City or use something else that you like. Topography elevation. Click classify to apply it. I'm going to duplicate the layer and do the trick with the hillshade blending. I'll rename this to hillshade. Render it as hillshade. Now this, change the resampling. And that looks really nice. Exaggerate it a little bit. And then uh, blend it with the DM. Use multiply. And there we see it. Also view it in uh, the 3D view. Choose the DM. And there it shows up. And we can also add Google Hybrid. Inspect our uh, study area. And we can increase the tile resolution to see more details. We can play with these values. Now that we have the catchment boundary of our study area, we can add more open data that is relevant for our study. And we can style the data in a way that it can be printed later. First, I'm going to change the projection to UTM because that's what we are going to use with the GPS in the field. And you can uh, check which zone because it gives a preview. The purple cross shows where you are and the uh, uh, red rectangle shows uh, which zone it is. So we can find here that it's in uh, zone 32 north. 
And uh, let's change a bit the styling, so it will combine well with the open data. For the catchment boundary, we can use a so-called inverted polygon shape burst fill. So we choose the inverted polygons, and we change the subrenderer to shape burst fill. And it's always nice to have it from uh, gray to transparent white. If we give RGB the same number, it will be gray with a certain intensity. And for white, we choose uh, a transparency. So that will highlight the study area compared to the background. Play a bit with uh, the distance and the blur strength. Let's also style the catchment. It's continuous, so we use single band pseudo color. And we can use one of the presets from CPT City. And I use here topography elevation. Click classify to apply it. I'm going to uh, duplicate the layer and rename it to Hillshade. Because we do the trick of uh, blending the colors of the DEM with the Hillshade. So I use the Hillshade renderer and need to change the resampling to linear to make it a bit uh, smoother. And then I can switch on the blending to uh, multiply and this will give, give us the shading effect with the colors. Now what I miss is a sharp boundary of the catchment, so I add another sub-renderer. So these are different layers. And I add here a black line, I make it a bit thicker. And let's make it red, and fine-tune a bit. Now we also had uh, online layers, with the aerial photographs. And uh, we can see it here nicely with the inverted polygon shape burst fill, and the same with the topographical map. It is useful to make separate groups of uh, offline and online data. It's just a bit to organize uh, the layers panel here. To create a group with online layers. And another group with offline layers. You can simply drag the layers and drop them into the group. You can also select multiple and do that. And now we have our data arranged in the groups. So let's go to the French Geoservices site and uh, check what data is available in the catalog. Not all data is available for free, but uh, at least here we can get a nice overview. And if you click on one of these tiles, you get more information. Most is, of course, in French. So you need to figure a bit out what is uh, useful for you. There are scanned topographical maps, and those are uh, not available for free, but the uh, vector data is available for free. So if we go to téléchargement, which means download, and I can uh, zoom into the study area. And there's the BD Topo shapefile product, which gives us all the points, lines, and polygons of the topographical map. And I can simply download this. It's a 7-zip file. 7-zip is a very nice open source uh, software for uh, zipping. You can download it for free from 7-zip.org. And uh, I've opened here the zip file and I go there to the folder that I want to extract. Donnet, that means uh, data, so that's the folder that I need. And then the subfolder. And let's extract this one to the fieldwork folder. Back in QGIS, we see here the uh, extracted uh, folders. And uh, it's a lot of data. It's just buildings or here uh, reservoirs because we're going to focus on data that's useful for hydrological fieldwork. And uh, there are 
our reservoirs but outside of our catchment but just to give you an idea of what this layer is uh, we're going to look at the attribute table and there you see that uh, these are water reservoirs or water towers and uh, that might be quite useful but uh, here you see a few points outside of our catchment so i don't need those so i'm going to remove it then there's this uh, subfolder hydrography which has bassin versant which means uh, catchments and these are larger catchments than the ones that we uh, delineate because we look at sub catchments but we can see here that they are part of a bigger catchment And in order to know which catchments are at the border, we can uh, label, use toponym for the names. And here I see that in the west it is the La Duy catchment, in the south La Bléon, and in the east La Besse. Cours d'eau gives us the, the streams. And... Uh, to make them clearer, I'm going to make them a bit darker blue than the delineated uh, streams, so we can see the difference. We can see that these are uh, bigger ones, but they coincide quite well with the delineated stream. You can add the names again with toponym. Use a text buffer to make it clearer. You can use curved. So it will be placed along the river. And then there's this layer, Detail Hydrographique. And uh, if we're going to look at uh, that one, in the attribute table, we can see that that's quite useful information about uh, water points, cisterns, uh, sources, springs, fountains. So that's uh, useful for places where we want to uh, sample water and uh, learn more about uh, the groundwater. So we can style it with different colors for the categories or different symbols. We could give them labels. Also for the readability of the map we can give it a single symbol with a marker. And we can choose for example an SVG marker. Uh, for example this blue symbol Maybe to uh, change the size to make it more readable. There's some other layers that you can explore there. I'm going to look at uh, Troncon Hydrographique, which are the smaller streams. And let's give them a, a blue dash. We also see that that well, quite well coincides with our uh, delineated streams. And in the attribute table, we can see that they have uh, classified in different types. And then Occupation du Sol, that's a uh, land cover. We can look at uh, vegetation types. And uh, these polygons have different classes, so we can use uh, categorized based on nature, which is the type. We can click classify, they get random colors, and we see that these are different uh, forest types, for example. So to make them more uh, intuitive, we need to change uh, the colors. That's uh, quite some work here. I just do it quick and dirty by choosing a, a ramp. So that will do for now. And under layer rendering, you can change also the blending to multiply and combine it with the hill shade. There's some other data that might be interesting. Canalization, but we don't see that in this uh, study area. So remove it. In the transport, we can find the, the roads and paths in the study area. And that's very useful if we want to plan our field work. Because for every day, you need to plan for what you're going to walk and where you're going to uh, study the landscape and the water. So let's change the colors a bit. So these black lines are the paths. So our catchment already looks quite uh, useful like this for if we later make a map out of this with all these nice uh, elements on it. 
Let's make the outline a bit more uh, subtle. So now all these different uh, shape files and styles need to be packaged in one geo package. And we can do that with the package layers tool. We select all these vector layers. It only works for vectors. And we don't override the existing one, but we add it to the existing geo package. So choose save file. Choose our filter database. It still asks to replace it. You just answer uh, yes, it will not replace it. And it will add the layers to the geo package, including all the styles. Let's now also uh, save the project in the geo package. Project, save to, geo package. There, choose the file. And give it a name. You can uh, save multiple projects in a geo package. The only problem now is that these uh, layers that we packaged are not in this project. Those are still the shape files. So we need to remove those vector layers and add the ones from the geo package that we just uh, have added. They're not visible yet, so you need to refresh. Now we see them. And you see as we add them, the styles are also there. There they are. Make sure that the order of the layers is uh, as you want it. Let's make these uh, still a bit thicker. We don't want the labels. And now we can save our project in the geo package. And now all these layers are also referred to in the geo package, except of course the online layers and our uh, raster layers, which we can later drag in the geo package. So we have a lot of layers and to make it uh, easier to navigate, we're going to make map themes. And with map themes, we can uh, show just a selection of layers. So this is one for land cover. I'm also going to make one for the DEM. Uh, but there's a nice feature to have uh, contour lines, which make it also uh, easier in the field to interpret uh, geomorphology. So I'm going to duplicate the layer again. And this time I put it on top, rename it to Contours. And I use the Contours renderer. And here we already see the contour lines. And I can play with these intervals. And the index contour can have a different um, style as the ordinary contours. I'm going to demonstrate this here. I'm going to use 10 and 50, and the ones for 10, I make them a little bit uh, transparent. So those of 50 will be the thick black lines, and that's uh, quite nice to recognize the geomorphology here at all the valleys. So create a new theme, call it Elevation. I also create Themes for the online layers, so one for the online uh, topographic map, and one for the aerial photographs. And here you can see how you can use those map themes to quickly uh, show layers that you want to see. What's still missing is a geological map, and BRGM, the Geological Survey uh, of France, uh, has a nice website, uh, even in English where you can uh, find the data. So you go to BRGM on the web and then there's this InfoTer portal to access geoscientific data. And uh, have a look at that site for a lot of other data Then I'm going to uh, demonstrate. I'm just going to show you how to get uh, to the geological map and to add it to your QGIS project. So there are these uh, geo services. There's a lot of uh, description here. It supports these uh, OGC standards. In this table you see which uh, services are available. 
we're going to use this link. And add it to uh, the browser here. New connection. Let's call it BRGM. Paste the link. Click OK. Expand it and there we see the geological map. So we add it to the map canvas and there it loads. So we can add another map team and save the project. If you want to have a local copy of uh, online data, you can uh, do that in different ways. One way is to export it to a georeference picture. Just keep the defaults and it will save everything in your map canvas to a georeference picture. You can use PNG or you can use a TIFF. If you choose TIFF, it will be a GeoTIFF. And then you have a local copy of uh, what you have in the map canvas, but also at that resolution. Let's prepare the field map for our study area. First, we're going to add a few points of interest. I'm going to create a new layer in our geo package. So I choose new geo package layer. I choose the geo package where we are storing all our data. Let's call it uh, POI, points of interest. It's a point layer and we use the projection uh, that we use on the GPS, which is UTM. And uh, you can add any field that you want, but I just add a ID text field to give a code. And I choose add new layer, so it will be added to the geo package. And now I can digitize those points of interest. Now, what are points of interest? Uh, points that you want to visit in the field uh, that you can already see that they're interesting from the map. For example, where uh, paths cross the river. The dashed line uh, comes from uh, EGN, so where it crosses, um, I will add a point of interest. Other points of interest can be uh, if you find something interesting on the geological map, on the aerial photograph that you want to visit, um, outcrops that you can see, or um, where tributaries uh, of a river meet, where you can do water quality measurements, or you want to measure a discharge. So all kinds of things that are interesting to uh, capture. So here, just for example, I'm adding a couple of those points. Also give them a good style. I'm going to use also an SVG marker here. And in this case I'll use the red symbols. Need to make them bigger. And I use um, the attribute with the ID for the labels. So also make sure that this is uh, nicely visible. Because we are going to print this and uh, it needs to be readable in the field. Let's remove the delineated channels and only use the ones from EGN. And uh, I also want those uh, points added to the map theme. So I need to replace the land cover map theme so it uh, has these updates. Otherwise they will not show up if I use those map themes. If I want to add those uh, points of interest also to the topographical map, I need to use that map theme and also replace it after switching on the points. So that's important. Let's switch back to the land cover map and start uh, making our new print layout. First, save the project to be sure. Choose new print layout and give it a unique name. I call it land cover. And there's our sheet of paper in a new window. And the first thing we do is change the page properties. And I'm going to use A3 here. And depending on the shape of your catchment, you can use portrait or landscape. In this case, uh, the catchment is almost square, so it doesn't matter much. Uh, zoom to the paper. And now I'm going to uh, 
drag the map frame. Leave a little bit of space on the sides for uh, the coordinate grid that will be added later. And now uh, here in the map frame, you can uh, tune the size of the map by clicking that other uh, move button. And with control scroll, you can take uh, small steps in zooming. And when you drag the map, it will move. And make sure that you maximize the space of your study area in the map frame but not that parts are cut off. You can always uh, fine tune by changing the value here for the map scale. I choose to follow the map theme of land cover. Later we'll create the other maps. And I want to use a grid which is very important for in the field because we use it in combination with our GPS. It will use the projection of your project uh, by default and the intervals are in meters then in this case. So I use a kilometer grid, but you can see that it's too coarse. A finer grid is uh, better for in the field for this detailed map. So I change it to 500 meters. It updates when you uh, click in a field. And you can change the, the black lines to something uh, more subtle, but it still needs to be clear for in the field. Uh, maybe I choose uh, blue. And you can change the blending. Try uh, different types. This one is too subtle and uh, it will be hard to read in the field. Maybe this one is nicer. Play around a bit with it to uh, get a nice one. should not be too dominant, but it should be clear. I use exterior ticks. And I want to draw the coordinates. And uh, by default, it looks very ugly. I'm going to use uh, a suffix so we know when it's easting and northing. That helps us. And I'm going to use for the left vertical ascending. And for the right, the text should be vertical descending. And I don't want decimals, so I put that on zero. And now it looks much nicer. Now the only thing uh, to add is then a label with the name of the projection. That should not be the EPSG code, but really the name of the projection. So the people in the field can match it with a projection uh, that is set in the GPS. The GPS only returns coordinates and the map can be used to uh, locate yourself by reading the coordinates from the grid. So always make sure that the GPS projection matches with the map. When you save a print layout, it's saved in the project. So basically the save button saves the whole project. Um, I still want a frame that looks a little bit nicer. Yeah. Save it and I can uh, export this map to a PDF for uh, printing. You can change some settings here, but I keep the defaults. And then it creates the PDF and when it's done, you get a message. If you click on it, it opens the location of the file and then you can uh, easily open it in your PDF viewer. And here we see uh, the field map and we can send that to the A3 printer.